In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this pile, PLTTB1 turntable. Uh, these turntables can be had for anywhere between $60 and about $100, depending on who you get it from. So it's definitely worth a look at, especially if you're in the market for a, a brand new turntable and you don't want to spend the money or don't like any of the vintage options that are available. Um, this might be a very good uh, buy for you. Now this particular one is a non-USB version. That one costs about $25, $30 more than this one. So there is no uh, Phono preamp built into this. It's all um, just direct line out to the stereo receiver from the cartridge, which is the way I prefer them to be because the reviews that I've seen of these turntables that have a built-in Phono preamp, and the Phono preamp is typically not regarded as something worthwhile. People usually... Um, pull those things out and rewire them so it just has a direct shot from the cartridge out to the tuner. But let's go ahead and have a look at this thing. I think at uh, $60, $70 this is definitely worthwhile to have a look at. And this thing does have a stroboscope on it. It's belt driven, which I do like the belt driven. Um, and I have both belt driven and direct drive. I like them both, but um, I prefer the belt drive. Uh, simply because it isolates the motor from the platter better. This does have a true uh, aluminum, I'm assuming aluminum, but it has a true metal uh, tone arm on it, which is something really unique for a turntable in this price range. The platter, however, is plastic, at least that's what I've read, so we'll find out. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing and uh, see what we got inside of here. I haven't seen anybody actually do a review of one of these, so um, let's go ahead and see if it's actually worth uh, recommending. Now, I don't really think pile stuff is anything too special, but this turntable, the turntables actually don't look too bad. Mostly more known for making car stereos, honestly. We got a pretty decent manual there, actually. First thing we've got is the platter cover itself, and this feels like just a, uh, it's definitely a material, that's for sure, it's not rubber, but it's a pretty thick, pretty thick mat there. It's got, it's got a little bit of weight to that actually, it's not too bad, not too bad at all. Okay, so pulling it out of the box, my first impression is this thing is light. It's not overly light. It's 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 definitely lighter than my JC Penney's uh, 6500, which is a Technics built unit. Just pan over there to that. That's a uh, that's a very nice turntable right there. Look how much I paid for that too. That thing's practically brand new too. Very almost no scratches on the cover there. It looks like they did a nice job in the packaging on this. Shipped it well. There's we got our line outs. We got our ground and our plug, power plug right there. And you know, in this price range, um, you can really only find vintage stuff in this price range. New turntables from like Sony are over a hundred dollars. In some cases, well over a hundred dollars, and they're USB turntables, and they're not even as good as this. They don't they don't have a stroboscope. They don't have an S-shaped uh, tone arm, which this does. And uh, I think I, the re stuff that I've read on this turntable, it looks promising, if nothing else. The needle, or the stylus, whichever you want to call it, uh, according to the manual, only requires two grams of tracking force, which is very impressive. And there's the inside of it. You can see they've got the... everything's assembled on this. And this does have a removable head shell just like the older Technics and Duels and stuff like that did. 
and that certainly is metal. That's a real tone arm there. Have a look at that. Nice little protective cover so you can upgrade this head shell or the uh, cartridge and stylus if you wanted to. Stylus actually looks a lot like the, I mean, the yeah, the stylus and the uh, cartridge there uh, look a lot like the dual cartridges, actually. So, we'll find out how this works. You can see that plastic platter there. It's pretty thick, though doesn't really feel too cheap to me it's pretty sturdy plastic here pretty thick you can see it's already I you can see it's already assembled but it's got a little uh, lock C, C lock in that thing right there so I've got a little bit of foam right here for the counterweight and uh, yeah, it's got an honest to goodness counterweight on it too. Let's pull that sucker off. I gotta, I have to adjust this anyway. So this counterweight looks like I'm kind of wondering if this counterweight will fit uh, my Marantz turntable because I need a counterweight for that. I actually have a counterweight that looks exactly like this too. This is this. There's a lot of weight right here. You can see it's solid. I don't know if it's aluminum or steel. I don't have a magnet on on hand to check, but it's probably steel because it's definitely pretty heavy. So I don't think aluminum would be quite that heavy if it was. Let's see. There we go. So let me uh, let me get the. I guess I'll get the packaging off here now. But uh, what I was going to say is, uh, let me. Uh, I'm going to have to pause the video and get the uh, counterweight set up according to the manual. The, the uh, uh, let's get that all set and then see uh, how it plays. Yeah, that's. It looks like a real turntable to me. Hardboard bottom, spring-loaded feet right here. It's uh, it's not too bad. This uh, reminds me of sort of an '80s style turntable, but uh, the stroboscope's nice. That's a nice thing to have. We also got the pitch control, so we can adjust the speed of that strobe and get it dialed in exactly where we need it. Well, we've also got 33 and uh, 45 RPM record button down here. I can zoom. Turn that down there, down here, 35-43 speed. That's uh, that feels like a pretty decent button there. I've got a switch back here for power. Start, stop. Buttons don't feel too bad. The uh, pitch control slider feels pretty nice too. That's 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 got a nice feel to it. I, so far, I'm. I'm uh, impressed. Now this is a manual turntable. It's got a lever right back here to to raise and lower the tone arm. It also has anti-skating back here as well. So it's got pretty much everything we need. It does have a 45 RPM adapter in the back there as well. So what I noticed in adjusting the speed is that the preset adjustment's a little bit off. As you can see here I'm having to adjust it. This is in the 33 and a third speed. And I'm having to raise it about one notch above the center line. In 45 RPM, it's a little bit worse than that. I have to adjust it almost all the way to the top, or about four bars away from the top. And uh, it's a little bit touchy up here, but uh, you can see it at the very bottom of the platter there. So it's, it's kind of hard to see. I wish this platter was a little bit taller, but at least you can see it if you're looking really carefully. And before I put a record on here, I just want to take note of how quiet this thing is. It's a really nice motor in here. It's not loud at all, even at the 45 RPM speed. Uh, you don't hear this thing. At least you got your ear way up close to it. 
you don't hear anything so they did a good job on that so let's just find out how this thing sounds and if there's any motor noise that comes through the the record I don't think there's gonna be but so far I'm liking this so let's see how well it sounds with the record <laughs> The one shortcoming that I noticed on this turntable was the uh, spring tension on the hinges for the dust cover right here. It's it's okay, it's not bad, but it does make the whole thing bounce around a little bit. So you got to be kind of careful with that because it will make the the stylus jump on the record. And the feet are not adjustable, so there's no way to tighten those springs down. Uh, to make it less bouncy. It is what it is. So I think this thing could have done with a little bit more weight just to kind of help offset the spring tension of these hinges. Uh, it stays open just fine. It has no problem with that. Um, and uh, I think just a little bit more weight added to this thing uh, would have made that uh, much better. But it's manageable as long as you know what to expect. So if you fling this thing open, which I did accidentally because I didn't realize the spring tension, it was kind of gets to about the three-quarter waypoint and it just kind of pops up on its own. And you can see the whole the whole base kind of rocks around. So so I can get a better shot of that. Kind of you can see the whole thing kind of bounces around a little bit when that happens, and it does make the like I said the stylus jump. So that's something that you just want to keep in mind with this thing. Um, other than that, uh, the fact that the speed of this thing is not uh, quite accurate, this is where I ended up having to get the speed set on the pitch control to get it just right. And uh, it's just a little bit, it's about halfway, with the, with the record actually on and the, and the stylus touching the, the record, um, it's about halfway between the, the middle point, the white, and then the one red right above it's about in the middle of, of that the 45 rpm it was further up here to get it adjusted right so let's keep that in mind as well but at least you can adjust it which is nice turntables that don't have the stroboscope thing on them you can't adjust so you have to get special equipment and stuff like that to actually track the the uh, speed of the platter uh... the platter it's not too bad uh, being a plastic platter, uh, there's no issues with it. It holds the record just fine. And uh, you can see when I put the start button here, it comes to life pretty much instantly there. So And it stops pretty much instantly as well. So that's, that's nice. Um, uh, being that the platter is uh, plastic, it's chrome painted around here. So that's probably going to eventually wear off. So I would suggest probably not touching that as much as possible. Otherwise you'd have to repaint it. Uh, I think uh, if they did an aluminum platter on this thing, I think this thing would be really, really something to have. The way it is right now, I recommend it for $60 to $80. Uh, when you start getting to about the $100, $150 price point, I would suggest starting to look at possibly uh, something nice in the vintage era. Um, Technics, Duel, um, Marantz. Uh, there was a lot of really good units made in the in the 80s. There's a lot of good ones out there that sound good, but keep in mind that older equipment will probably need work. Belt driven will probably need to have the belt replaced. 
The stylus will probably need to be replaced. Um, a lot of times they're missing the whole head shell. Uh, the cartridge might need to be replaced and that's added, added expenses to a vintage unit. So this has a lot of good benefits to it. You know the fact that this is an actual metal tone arm, uh, a weighted tone arm as they call it. Um, and it uses a uh, removable head shell that Audio Technics and Technics and a lot of other dual, some of the dual decks used, uh, but a lot of higher end um, turntables use this type of stylus. So you can put any cartridge you want on this. In fact, I tried my Audio Technica cartridge here that I use on my JC Pennies just for a test, and it works perfectly fine with this. This is, I think, this is definitely worth the money, especially since new turntables in this price range do not have a stroboscope. The USB one, um, if you really want to record uh, vinyl to the computer, it does come with Audacity software. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, you know, that might be beneficial to you, but I prefer something that I can just plug into a vintage stereo that has a true phono input. It's already got the phono preamp built into the stereo because those are typically far better than the preamp that's in these things that they come with on USB. So this is the USB turntable. So this is a really nice, I think this is probably, a, th it's great value for the money. Let's put it that way. 60 to $80. I don't know that I'd spend more than 100 on it. Um, if you can get it for 60 to 80 I think you're golden on this. Uh, this particular one I paid 70 for. And uh, the ones I saw that were 60 they were um, unit, they were uh, returns and they were tested which might actually be a good thing uh, it doesn't hurt to buy something used that's tested if it's in you know good like new shape which the seller claimed it was but I just decided to go with a brand new one uh, for this review and it was only about ten dollars more so anyway I hope you guys like this and uh, if you're looking for a turntable and you don't want to spend a lot of money I definitely recommend this if you don't want to go vintage uh, this will definitely uh, it, it sounds great uh, it has the options, it has, well, I should say, it has the stylus that most of us like to see on a good quality turntable. I wouldn't say this is a high quality, but I think for the money, this is actually pretty good quality. Anti-skating, it is manual, so keep that in mind. It does not auto-retract once it gets to the end of the disc. It's going to sit there and just keep going and going and going until you get over here and lift that lever and move it back. But some people prefer the manual over automatic, so... Um, of course you have to lift the lid on this thing to get to the controls and that might be a downside to you. Uh, I do prefer the ones that have the buttons on the front, but a lot of uh, vintage units, even this one right here, does not have uh, front facing controls on it. So it's not all that uncommon to see. Overall I think they did a really good job on this. Whoever, I don't know if Pile built this or someone built this for Pile, but this is this is a good unit. I really recommend this if you're looking to spend, you know, no more than $100. This is definitely a good option for you. It sounds good. Um, very happy with this. I'm actually really surprised at how well this thing sounds. So, anyway, take care, everyone. Peace out.